Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. When I reflect on most of my previous podcast interviews, it's apparent that one of the most pressing concerns among HR professionals is implementing agility in their workplaces. The concept of being agile is definitely sweeping the commercial world and they are also transforming HR. Hi everyone, I'm your host Sushmita and to talk about how agility is transforming and modernizing the world of HR, today I'm joined by the pioneer of the agile HR movement, Natal Dank, who heads up learning, consultancy and coaching at PXO Culture. Welcome to the show Natal. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Thanks for joining me in this conversation, Natal. How are you doing? Yeah, really well, really well. Uh, the weather is not so great here in Scotland today, but otherwise I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, fine. So um, we'll be talking about uh, being agile in HR today. But before that, uh, would you like to please brief us about your background in HR? And also would like to would like you to introduce PXO Culture to us today. Yeah, so PXO Culture is a place where we help HR leaders and teams build great places to work. And it's mm. all about looking at modern contemporary ways of working underpinned by the agile mindset, which we're going to explore today. And my background, uh, well, I was in the world of HR for many years, but before that, I actually started in business roles in financial services. And these roles for a while, I, did, I discovered that For me, it was much more about the people side of an organization mm. that made a business a, a success mm. rather than the numbers as such. So right. I started to follow that passion. So before uh, before PXO Culture, you were in finance, right? No, no. So, okay, um, I'll just kind of go over the the history. And so, okay. so I started um, in business roles in financial services and I found that I then went into the area of coaching and learning mm. and development, mm. but I actually sat in business roles for a long time before I moved into HR. And actually, when I first went into HR, I found that it was seemed a bit too much about process rather than people, which sort of surprised me at the time. Um, but then I really got into understanding how do you build a great culture? How do you build a successful business through people strategy? Right. And that was the passion that I then followed. Right. And we'd like to know more about PXO Culture, about all its, uh, you know, the work that you do with your team. Yeah, sure. So at PXO Culture, we work very hands-on with HR teams and leaders. And we look at how do we start to revolutionize the way that HR works with their people and their business. And so we help them apply agile techniques and understand the agile mindset. And this is all about working in a more evidence-based role. It's about understanding your customer. So your, your different customer segments in an organization, building very human-centric solutions and really starting to build an employee experience that's like a customer journey full of right. moments that matter. Right. And so we look at everything from how do you start to apply these tools and techniques and evolve your operating model in the world of people and culture and HR. And we also help people deliver projects from everything from performance through to reward, through to, hmm. you know, culture, diversity, equity, inclusion, all those topics. Uh, we look at how to how to build great places to work through an agile mindset. Right. And uh, for sure, if we talk about being passionate about in the space and you have been championing agile HR and would like to know from you what actually we mean by being agile in the workplace. Yeah, well, first of all, fundamentally, there's a belief that we now live and work in a complex world and that actually what the way we've worked up until now isn't going to be relevant and get us the answers that we seek now that the world is very complex. And I always say that there's nothing like a pandemic to demonstrate the complexity of mm -hmm. and the uncertainty and the chaos that we can have in the business world. And prior to the pandemic, we were already looking within organizations, how do we be more customer centric? How do we deliver value at speed to our customers? How do we be more responsive? How do we collaborate and innovate in new ways? And this was leading many organizations towards a more agile way of working. Mm. And so Agile HR is taking that concept into the world of HR itself. And there's two sides of that. Mm. One is it can greatly revolutionize how we work. So it helps us co-create solutions. 
So we build solutions with our people through a test and learn approach, through data, through evidence. And we we build the solution with them rather than implementing it out onto them. So it's a whole new way of building change in organizations. Yeah, so for sure, COVID-19 has amplified the call for agility and collaboration. Yes. Hmm. And so, the, and then the other side is that we uh, need to play a role in building modern organizations. Hmm. And if you're wanting to build an organization that's more collaborative, more team-based, more networked uh, in how it's structured, then HR needs to understand the agile mindset, the tools and techniques, these ways of working right. to really help enable that. Right. Right. Um, so it's about actually changing our traditional processes to mm. uh, enable mm. collaborative team-based working in organizations. Mm. We'll talk about the tools and techniques, the skills and the you know methods that are needed to be successful in uh, Agile HR. But before th- that, uh, Natal, would you like to tell us about your book, uh, Agile HR, Deliver Value in a Changing World of Work and uh, what actually inspired you to write the book? Yeah, well, the way, the reason that we wrote the book was that we were just getting asked the questions that you're asking me today, uh, mm-hmm. which is, you know, what is agile? How do you start to use it in the world of HR? Um, you're probably aware, and many of the listeners, is that agile started in technology. And, and while it now is moving across all parts of business, some people struggle to understand how do you take that out of the technical space and apply it in an area which is more about people and employee experience. So the book is a practical toolkit of how to do it. Um, And it starts with explaining what's happening in the world, why lots of organizations and teams are using a more agile approach to how they work. So this ability to respond quickly to your customer needs, to innovate, to be um, flexible and adaptive in your organizational design. And then it looks at the two areas that I talked about before. So one is how does HR use these techniques Hmm. from everything from design thinking through to visualizing your work and prioritizing your work through value. Um, And then looks at HR's role in helping organizations become more agile and how do we build the products and services to help enable that. Yeah. So uh, would you like to tell us about some of the ways in which HR can evolve to be more agile? Yeah, sure. So you're wanting to explore some of the ways that HR take on Mm. agile. Is that Mm. the question? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So first of all, it's very much understanding this mindset of people before process, the idea of, you know, we work in a complex world and you therefore you need to embrace this more test and learn approach. So how do you build a solution through data and evidence. So probably good to just explain um, where Agile comes from. And it comes very much from saying, okay, in a complex environment, if you run a project in the more traditional waterfall way, which is planning everything up front, you know, the budget, the processes, the documentation, uh, the training, and then you start to design and then you implement often sometimes months, even years Mm. later, and, and you implement in a big bang all at one time. What was happening is as the world starts to shift and evolve, your, your plans just can't hold that entirety. Um, and when you implement, you've needed to make a lot of changes to that plan to ensure that it's going to actually land and be what your customer needs. And this actually increases risk. So agile is a way of actually understanding how and what I'm going to deliver is the right thing for my customer and how do I get the data to prove that? So what you do is you actually work in smaller cycles or iterations and you go, okay, out of all the things that we need to do in this project, what is the most valuable thing to do first? And let's go and do that. Let's try and get something of value, something tangible to our customer within Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a month and get some feedback. Does this work? Does it not? You know, are we going in the right direction? And then use that feedback to inform the next cycle of work. And so you've probably heard concepts like Mm. minimal viable Mm. product, uh, you know, test and learn prototyping. So it's all about using Mm. those techniques to build a solution over time that's very evidence-based and data-driven. So that's kind of the heart of of what Agile is. Um, So for HR, it's understanding how do you start to apply those methods within the world of of people, culture and organisational change. 
Yeah. So talking about this, what are the top skills and mindsets uh, that you think is a must, you know, needed to succeed in uh, being an agile HR? Sure. So the first one is being customer centric and understanding how to define value. Right. So customers sit at the heart of everything you do in an agile way. And so you're you're wanting to always know how do I define the value to my customers? And this for EHR will be your different employees, it will be leaders, but it's also understanding what we do at an organization and how do we help people get the job done so they deliver value through to the end customer, which is the people that buy the products and services that the company either sell or provide. So it's understanding value and it's mm-hmm. using that value to prioritize your work. And we often talk about ruthless prioritization. Mm-hmm. And then there's tools and techniques to help you visualize mm-hmm. your work. So mm-hmm. how do you constantly use a backlog, uh, things like understanding work in progress to always be focused on the most important thing to do at any one point in time. And this is crucial for HR people because this is, we always have this huge wish list. We also have very vague topics like um, enriching the employee experience or delivering well-being. What does that really mean? And so Agile helps us break that down into very tangible uh, deliveries and solutions. So understanding value, understanding your customer, and then applying a experimental kind of framework or in mindset. So you need to be ready to test and for things not to work so you can quickly find out what does work. So it's being willing to experiment, being willing to prototype, being willing to test and doing that directly with your people. I think the other final one that's super important for HR is letting go of our traditional functional topic uh, construct. So we've always worked is uh, individuals looking Mm. after reward or recruitment or talent, but actually to solve complex problems, we all need to work together. So in Agile, we want to come together and deliver solutions as a multifunctional team. And this is a really powerful way for HR to work because it means we have this much more holistic approach to how we build the employee experience. And this is all the things that people keep telling me they want to be able to do uh, when I go to conferences and speak mm-hmm. to HR um, leaders and teams. So Agile can really help us find the answers to a lot of our challenges that we have at the moment. Right. And also, I would like to know, is there any training or coaching that you have seen that organizations are taking up as, as, as a part of the special, you know, education for, for the Agile chance? Yeah, well, definitely. That's why people come and work with PXO Culture, because that's what we specialize in. And I do think having a coach to help you get started hmm. to explore this mindset. And in particular, what I found is that HR need to understand how to translate Agile into our own context. Um, so sometimes they maybe are introduced to Agile through a more technical person and often they don't understand the language, they don't connect with it. So what's really important is working with somebody uh, that has done it before in the world of HR because then they truly understand our roles, our problems and how to actually apply it in our types of projects. So I think that's really important. The next thing, however, is you've really got to apply the, the the mindset and the skills. So I can't encourage people enough. Learning needs to be learning by doing. So definitely have a coach, definitely mm-hmm. do some core learning and some training. But very quickly, you're wanting to choose a nice, juicy, complex problem, bring together a multifunctional team and really give yourself, you know, three months to apply the Agile techniques and see how it works in action and use that to learn. So Agile is about working in cycles, reviewing uh, how you've worked and adapting your your plan or your your model. Um, So by applying that Agile cycle to your development, you very quickly upskill the team and also start to really adapt and learn how best to deliver your project in an Agile way. So truly embracing it like an Agile experiment is the best way to actually Mm. learn Agile itself. Right. So is there any story or an example that you want to share uh, in which your organizations, you know, they have shared the uh, after and before uh, benefits of bringing in agility in HR with the help of PXO maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's lots of great stories out there. Mm. And I think one of the best ones that um, I like to share is a really big organization 
that uh, had the problem of lots of their managers, which was thousands of managers, really wanted to learn and develop and get better at being a manager, but they never wanted to go on a two-day face-to-face program. So they Mm. used to be running these um, programs and managers always said, oh, I don't have time, I can't go. So they're like, okay, we've got a problem here where people say they need development. We get feedback from employees that managers need development, but managers never have time to attend the training. So what's going on? So they use some design thinking to go and explore well, what's really happening for the customer. And they spent time with managers and they discovered that managers uh, don't see the need to go to training, but they have problems to solve on a day-to-day basis. Right. So a manager might say, oh, I've got to hire someone tomorrow and I don't know how to do it. And I want to hire the best person for the team. Or tomorrow I've got a really difficult conversation and I'm not sure how to give this person feedback. And I, I really need to understand how to do that. So they started to use uh, prototypes and testing. What if we could get very, you know, what if we could get learning to those managers at the time that the manager thinks he has, the, they or she has the problem? So, for example, when the manager needs to go and give feedback, if they got a message, oh, would you like to learn how to do that? Would you like to attend a 90-minute session? Would you like to talk to a coach? Would you like to watch a video? Would you like to read this uh, uh, information? then suddenly they would they would say, yes, yes, I definitely want to do that because I need to fix this problem here and now. And what happened is they started to prototype and test all these small but very engaging ways to get learning to the manager when the manager thought they had the problem. They even linked it to systems such as an IHIS. So when a manager gets a message to do something, maybe the manager will want to learn how to do that. Uh, and they started to see this huge uplift managers accessing learning and they over time built this whole new on-demand management development approach they never did a two-day face-to-face program again and they had reinvented uh, in a very digital way Mm. their whole kind of learning suite for managers and it's just a great example of how agile is all about understanding your customer understanding the problems to solve and then using a test and learn prototyping technique to start to build the solution up over time through you know based on data and evidence of what works Um, so it's a great story I think to bring it to life well Natal congratulations and all the best to you and the entire team of PXO Culture for the great work uh, you guys have been doing around uh, Agile HR and um, before wrapping up this conversation if I tell you to point out three top benefits of Agile HR what would be those? So you'd like to look at three benefits that agility brings to organizations. Is that the question? Right. Okay, great. Uh, So three benefits uh, is, first of all, is about customer centricity. So by understanding your customer, you can deliver great value. And if you put that into the world of HR, that means understanding our people and delivering human-centric solutions, um, which makes work a great place Mm -hmm. to be. The other one is understanding how to prioritize our work through that value. And we are all just faced with this huge demand of huge wish lists, huge to-do lists, and we can never get everything done. So we need to be much better at understanding where to spend our time and working in a more agile way, in a more value-driven way. Mm -hmm. It really helps us understand what to say yes to, where to spend our time and what to actually put on the backlog for later um, to understand if that is the right thing to do at a later stage. So it's about being customer centric, value driven. And what you start to do is you start to co-create great solutions with your people. And so this means that you're no longer implementing solutions out to actually build them with people. So if you do that in the organization, you build an employee experience that everyone wants to be a part of. Uh, It's more personalized, it's more holistic, and it really enriches how people experience their work. Right. And for me, that is a secret to business success. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you then take that into how you deliver your customer products and services, so what you put out onto the market, an organization basically can be much more uh, successful by truly co-creating products and services that people want to buy and be part of. True. Thank you so much for sharing that, Natal. Uh, Finally, uh, is there any advice that you want to give to our HRs who are looking to become agile? Yeah, let let go of the old traditional mindset that everything, Mm. that we have to have everything shiny and perfect 
and actually go out and embrace experimentation and test and validate what works with your people before you implement it uh, into the organization. And you'll find that you'll just design much better solutions. Great. So thank you, Natal, for bringing your expertise and experience around this table today. Uh, finally, I would like to know how our listeners can reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Please contact me on LinkedIn. Um, I love a chat and I'm always uh, able to be contacted on LinkedIn. But also please come over to PXO Culture. So pxoculture.com. Uh, we have a fantastic newsletter that everyone loves, full of lots of uh, videos and great reads. But also we do lots of free meetups that people can come along to and learn more about how to apply Agile, how to develop a, your T-shape and your T-shape team, and how to use things like design thinking in HR. So please come along. We do a we generally do a meetup every month uh, and they're free to, to join. Great. So thank you, Natal, for your time and for this conversation, which is packed with all the relevant information about Agile HR. And I'm sure this will be genuinely helpful for our audience. So thank you once again. Great. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely. We hope to meet soon again and please do take care of yourself. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.